President of China and Russia just concluded their three-day summit meeting in Moscow. One of their talking points was a 12-point peace proposal China submitted to all the stakeholders along with Russia and Ukraine as a basis for starting peace talks in this conflict, which is widely and aggressively being publicized as unprovoked attack by Russia. Since it's a proxy war between USA and NATO against Russia, Ukraine has no say in the negotiation except supplying cannon fodder. Purpose of this presentation is to explain how truth is deliberately twisted and aggressively marketed to mobilize public opinion in favor of blatant lies in the name of journalism and in the interest of profiteering by the military-industrial complex. This diabolical game was played out in the conflicts of Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Syria, Libya, Yemen, and now in Ukraine. At the conclusion of summit, Russia declared that she has studied China's proposed peace plan with deep interest, including the prospect of ceasefire. Putin reiterated Moscow's desire to seek a diplomatic solution to the conflict and feels China's proposal could form a basis for peace negotiation. Mr. Putin pointed out that USA and collective West are not ready for it. Without West, Kiev is not a factor in this conflict. Hence, that plan has been derided by the West for not demanding Russia's military to withdraw. Xi, the president of China, said, China remains impartial. China is always on the side of peace and at the right side of history. U.S. administration, along with NATO, on the other hand, rejected the peace plan outright. Under the pretext, it's a proposal for ratification of Russia's territorial gain following her unprovoked aggression of Ukraine a year ago. This concept of unprovoked aggression needs an explanation with special reference to how Western media has perfected techniques of legitimizing fiction into facts. We will refer to this issue later. First Post, in its news item, declared, no takers for Xi Jinping's peace plan. USA and Collective West, through their brand of media exposure, has conditioned world population to accept USA and Collective West as the champion of democracy, freedom, and human rights, kind of an angel, as opposed to everyone else, especially Russia and China, who are devils. For the first time since the last war ended in 1945, USA and the West is confronting two adversaries that have become highly developed and enormously powerful by reshaping and reconditioning their long-neglected human resource through indigenous schooling. West seem to have miscalculated and believed in their own fiction that Russia is militarily weak, underdeveloped, and poor country. This was exactly what Hitler convinced himself of and ventured to invade Russia through Ukraine, leading to a world war that resulted in total defeat of Germany and Italy by Russia alone. This total defeat cost Hitler his life by suicide. Russia lost about 30 million lives. USA and UK collectively paid with about 1 million lives. However, so-called free media of Anglo-American West have overinflated their ridiculous and marginal contribution to the defeat of Nazism by inflating their own role and deflating Russia's and discrediting gigantic personality of Stalin in front of whom Western war leaders distinctly appeared like a stunted squirrel. China's contribution in the last war, according to West, is non-existent. Western free press, their church-controlled education system, 
vicious NGOs, church-owned mainstream media collectively have made the pauperized third world swallow this fictitious narrative of their heroism. Allow me the privilege to present a well-concealed historical fact about the last war that is hardly ever disclosed publicly and never in India. During the last war, the UK raised an army of about 6 million. Of that, more than 2.5 million soldiers were from India, a fact that is never ever mentioned in any historical account, not even in India. This enormous military resource, over and above the supply of military hardwares and food supply of the soldiers that UK acquired from India, has been hushed up. This diabolical plot, hatched by the West, is understandable. But Indian governments since 1945 fully cooperated in hushing up these diabolical plots. The so-called victory of UK starved four million civilians to death in Bengal. This brutal fact is never ever mentioned in any public forum of India. But Anglophonic India is critical about gas chamber and Jews. Coming back to the Russia-China summit, Kremlin has accused U.S. of adding fuel to the Ukraine, Ukraine conflict and preventing Kiev from entering any negotiations with Moscow. U.S. officials told American news outlet Bloomberg that Washington is worried about being backed into a corner over the Chinese peace proposal. Peskov, the spokesperson of Russian president, said with masks off, the collective West is eagerly showing its bestial grin. Any peace initiative for Ukraine arising from Russia-China talks as unacceptable. Washington said any ceasefire now would only ratify Russia's conquest to date. Truth is, since the end of last war in 1945, world has suffered more than 280 armed conflicts. Of that, more than 270 was instigated by USA and Collective West. As a rule, there, that is USA and West, targets meaning militarily hounds on small, weak and underdeveloped countries under the pretext of safeguarding democracy, freedom and human rights. It is noteworthy that West has not yet launched their boots on the ground, invariably because they are aware of their importance and know well enough what will be the outcome of a direct confrontation with Russia, who alone crushed the military might of Hitler. It is said that USA has never won a single conflict after its civil war back in 1865. They, however, must be credited for launching a media warfare, propaganda, throughout the world to conceal their shortcomings and weaknesses. At the same time, denigrate successes and glories of others. Summit meetings of China and Russia has created a deep impression of the social, political and military significance of both countries throughout the world and a message of new world order is already echoing in the air. In this note, it must be acknowledged that power of the emerging multipolar world must place emphasis on countering media warfare of the West with misinformation and disinformation. Two important tasks are to be undertaken on a war footing by the emerging multipolar world. First task, a strategy to defeat West in their media warfare. It is really astonishing how Western media use the terminology unprovoked attack of Russia over Ukraine, as though this concept is beyond doubt and discussion. In reality, Russia has been appealing to USA and the West since the dissolution of Soviet Union that expansion of NATO to her doorstep is a red line. That appeal was ignored with contempt due to the assumption that Russia is militarily weak and economically underdeveloped. So, 
she deserves to be treated like any other client states. Russia was promised that NATO will not expand even an inch towards Russia. Yet, West, by design, forcefully replaced a democratically elected government in 2010, that of Viktor Yanukovych, and installed a hostile government run by domesticated subjects of U.S. and collective West. There is a historical precedence to such contempt towards Russia and Russians. Germans and their allies still believe overtly and covertly that they are Aryans, and all others, including Slavs, meaning East Europeans, are subhuman or untermenschen, who deserve to be subjugated and employed as slaves. Until very recently, Anglo-American West used to brand Chinese as yellow devils and barbarians, until Mao Zedong in 1949 declared in Tiananmen Square that China has stood up. Gone forever are the days when Chinese will be branded as barbarians and yellow devils. It is precisely this psychology of the West that instigated savagery and violence of USA and NATO against weak and pauperized countries during the recent past. Of the two important tasks, the first one is launching and winning media warfare, as explained. The second one, equally important, is empowering the underclass of the so-called developing countries that is clustered in the Global South. Human resource of Global South being exposed to the media influence of Anglo-American West is suffering from psychological slavery and have become appendage of the West. This human resource must be reshaped and reconditioned through high quality mother tongue based indigenous schooling that will revive confidence and respect for indigenous language, literature, history, tradition and culture. Such empowering is to ensure defeat of oligarchic domination who are conduits for siphoning out natural resources to their Western patrons, resulting in pauperization of indigenous people and one of the major factors of Western affluence. This is a crucial moment. Why? There are decades when nothing happens and there are weeks when decades happen. Now is the time when world may see decades happening in weeks. Let the new world order present a new type of democracy to the world, where people may not change the party in power, but force the party to change policy to stay in power. In contrast to a system of the West where one can change the party in power, but never the policy. Summit of Xi Jinping of China and Putin of Russia is signaling emergence of a new kind of democracy where people will have both the power and the right to change policy. The existing pauperized masses of Global South conditioned to mental and physical servitude must be transformed to right kind of schooling into new people with new thinking, pursuing new kind of democracy of which both Russia and China are pioneers. Let these two tasks be important agenda of the new world order emerging in the horizon. If you like what you see and hear, Please subscribe and ring the bell.